All right, all bets are in. One Up Radio Network is on the air, and this is the One Up Year Show for June 9th, 2006. I'm your host, Garnet Lee. As you can tell, I got a little uh, cold thing working, but I'm fighting through it. Got my English tea. Oh, very good. It's very awesome. All right, so today's show, we're going to do the uh, What You've Been Playing segment up front, of course. And like I was saying, all bets are in. We do have a winner for the uh, second week of the contest sitting right here on the table. And it wasn't the most insulting one, but I really liked the most insulting one. But we'll get to that in a minute. In the uh, in the middle section, we're going to talk about open-ended gameplay versus scripted gaming. Um, that's been up a lot, especially considering how hot GTA was in our forums when we were talking about it. And with the blowing up of uh, MMOs, it seems like something we need to get into. And then at the end, of course, we'll hit the uh, news section with Mr. Luke Smith. Good morning. <laughs> Doodling while you're here. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I was, I was that's what news guys out do. a little bit. Doodle? Yeah. yeah. You know, they do it on your notepad. So I guess we'll go around the table, get this thing started. What's going on, fellas? Shane, how are you this morning? I'm doing great, Luke. Good. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Oh, oh it's very special. Would you it's like to share, share a last, coffee? Well, last week, they, they agreed with each other twice, and it's I mean, completely changed dynamic. <laughs> Can you agree about what you've been playing this week? Yeah, I don't think so. I actually, because everything I play, Shane's probably played months before, but I played through New Super Mario Brothers. I was coming back from my sister's wedding. That's so last month. I you know. played it's, through it? The yeah, whole thing? I just, well, like one, five, so like the top levels to eight, and just was done. It's, fu- it's a fun game. It's fun. It's good. Then for uh, well, that wasn't such a ringing endorsement. Yeah, like you it's not, fun. Like it's, you loved it. Well, it, it has a great personality. It's yeah. It's like when you're when I'm playing, and the first three levels are like, hey, regular world, desert land, water world. I was like, I played this game in 1991. It was Super Mario Brothers three, and this game doesn't have a tanuki suit, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't I don't care. But it, you know, it doesn't pull any punches, and it's solid and it's enjoyable. It is and, solid. And like I, as stupid as it is to say, it is what it is, and it's good at what it's do- doing. And I, I don't like the it's save a system. huge hit. Huge, yeah. Huge. Hit. I don't like the save system, and I don't like the uh, the music. You know, but otherwise, you know I like what? It. Couldn't save in Super Mario Brothers Three. Couldn't save ever. You know, producer I, Skip fine. has left some of his uh, questionable toys the around. around. What, oh, what the hell is this thing? Well, in order, to, in order to see what they're talking about, they I have know. to check out the video. <laughs> which Good is seek. Which is we did yeah. forget to mention. That, that was an awesome segue. That was an awesome segue <laughs> yeah, and a save. So like. As as Jason is here, Jason, we should. I wish we could turn the camera around for you, but Jason from Game Videos is here filming us, and that will be up late in the evening today with the uh, on Game Videos. So just sit there and click refresh and <laughs> mash refresh. Yeah, watch mash the Marty refresh. O'Donnell Halo Three exclusive interview that we put up today too. Another thing I was playing is NFL Head Coach, which Brian Intahar and I are doing oh. something on for EGM, and yeah. I really, really like. I talked about it a while ago. Like I really wanted to like NFL Head Coach because I'm a huge stat whore and I love statistics, but. Is it like the um, sports interactive, like football manager stuff that's big in the UK? It's all like yeah, it's it's like playing a spreadsheet. It's it is playing Excel. Tell me, tell me what you told me about the first eight hours you played. The first eight hours, I don't God, I don't remember what I told you, it, other than it was just fucking reading over and over. I was like, like I finished my first my first orientation thing, which is a timeless event. Like there's no time frame that you can work in, and the first thing you do is interview. Like you interview all your coaches, like. And it's not like I'm the head coach. It's not like I'm interviewing my offensive and defensive coordinators. I have a quarterbacks coach, a running backs coach, a wide receiver. Like, how much money do you get paid to play this game? That's, that's, it's that's all feeding all. into the NFL, that's and they're actually like, like, remember we fired him. He doesn't get paid. Because you know, like anymore. NFL head coach get paid a lot of money. It was. <laughs> yeah, it's like a job. In the text on my television, it could be the TV that I have, but the TV I have looks okay, but the text is really hard to read, and I have to sit really close, and I have like a cathode tan now. Are you working on like a you know, like a PowerPoint presentation you have to give, the, give the owner later? I'm <laughs> almost done with it. I, what systems like, it on? I'm PS2. playing it on Xbox. It's PS2 and Xbox. Yeah, yeah. I can... <laughs> oh. It's it's rough. Like I really wanted to like it too. So does it does it play out the games and like graphically at all? Eventually, or? I'm not to that part yet. What? I'm still You've been in playing for eight hours. I'm and still you've not in played a game. I'm yet? still in like you don't, training you don't camp. You don't control the game. You don't play Right, I know. No. But I mean, it, yeah. I mean, if it's like these football manager games, what you would do is you'd, you'd you'd affect all the stats in the stadium or whatever, and then it would like it would do a I, sort of compress simulate. The it would simulate a game, but it would play them with in, on a 3D pitch, and you could uh, watch highlights or whatever. So uh, so I've actually seen the game demo demoed, and yes, the games play out in. 3D, and it's almost like watching the uh, like watching the TV cam of Madden. It's really it's really nicely presented and everything. Here's the problem that I had when they were demoing it that kind of pissed me off. That I want to know whether or not they changed. While you're playing this head coach role, you have to. You, you would think you'd be calling the plays, right? But you don't really have freedom to call the plays because it's like this big ass soap opera. You have to keep your coordinators happy. So you they suggest plays, and if you don't run enough of the plays they suggest, then they get pissed and go, you know what? Screw you! I'm going to go work someplace else. 
Which and then is, you have to hire someone. And then you have to hire someone. You have to get this whole it. crap all an over again. Interview. Like a guy came to my office the other day and started talking to me about it, and I literally just clicked, like, we're doing this later. Because I wasn't in the mood to do it. I mean, I would be wanting to call <laughs> the in plays. The so it's a game that's like real life. Yeah, and that sucks. <laughs> it's like HR the game. Yeah. I mean, wow. somehow I don't see, like, uh, Shanahan standing on the sidelines when, when someone calls in a play that he doesn't like and him overruling him and the guy going, you know what, that sucks, I'm going to quit. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. What are you playing, Shane? Well, for work, I've been playing uh, Valkyrie Profile for PSP. And ah, nice. Yeah, I played the old game on PS1. And it's kind of fun to play it again. It's really hard. It has new cinema. Yeah, it's a good game, you know. But it's a PS1 port, so it's hard to get that excited about it. It's something I've already played. But it's a game I'm playing on my PSP, and that's... That's unique. That's be, more than a lot of people yeah. can say about what they're doing with their You've PSPs. You've been playing a lot of PSP stuff for, lately. For work. And do you call it best try RPG ever? Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, that's kind of the reputation, right? Yeah, well, try they're, they're a really good B-level developer. I mean, but, like, the Star Ocean games, are, they're pretty good, you know? They're pretty good. I like I like tries. I've also been playing this game. Ringing and Dark. I know. <laughs> one of yours, this is as Joe. good as like the last oh. one you did. <laughs> There's this other great game called Rough Trigger. Have you heard of this? No, I haven't. I think it's, I've done what it. What the heck's that? Is that a move? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Maybe I call this one the Rough Trigger. <laughs> she didn't like it very much, huh? <laughs> no. <it's like> the... <laughs> so, At least it was a sheep. It's, it's so, a rough did you say trigger. a sheep? Did you say it was a sheep? <laughs> I think it says a she. And oh. the show is over. It's a she sheep. Anyway, the Rough Trigger is a Ratchet and Clank clone, like down to like every level. If you see this game, you would think, is that Ratchet and Clank? No, no, it's a Ratchet and Clank oh, clone. System. PS2, you like you play a thing that looks kind of like PS2 really needs another one. Yeah, you look kind of like Ratchet. You have a little sidekick who looks kind of Clank, and you get different weapons, and it's basically Ratchet and Clank. Is it good? Uh, Who's it by? It's published by Natsume. Like as in, <laughs> wow, not so much interested. <laughs> Natsume, not so much. What? Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> but for fun, I've been playing Street Fighter Alpha Anthology, which is coming out in like two weeks, and it's fantastic. Street Fighter Alpha Two is like my favorite Street Fighter. You like it more than Third Strike? I like it more than Third Strike. I love Third Strike, but I, think, I really like Third Strike. I think Strike. the balance between simplicity and complexity, and like, it's just it's a really awesome game. We've been playing a ton of it. And Man, I see that on like so many screens walking through the office. It's mm-hmm. like you walk through the office and you're like, oh, that, that person's playing. Well, you know, Street that Fighter, it's it's good and it's always been good. It'll always be good, and there's just like pure gameplay and control. Like seriously, other people still can't make fighting games with the control and depth. Of Street Do you think we're ever going to see like a th- a 3D Street Fighter? You know, the last fighting game they made was so horrible. Capcom Fighting Jam. It was like an, it was so bad. It was terrible. So if that's the kind of game they make now, I'd rather like live with my memories. But if they could make another good fighting game, I'd be happy. But I don't. I'm not holding my breath. We got we got to watch out. Hey, Skip. By the way, can we put in like a board over here that's like the uh, strike count, but instead of the strike count, it's like the that's gameplay count, you know, so we can just kind of tick that shit off as it goes by. <laughs> John? I've been playing little bits of a lot of things. So I finished up Liberty City Stories. Which you gave a nine. I did. Dude. Because it was only $20. It was a value-driven thing. Um, that's Boy, a- I got a value counterpoint coming up. <laughs> but it, it is. Well, yeah, well, then. It is a new GTA. It's a new GTA that... 11 million, 11 million people that had, you know didn't play the PSP one that are potentially interested in GTA didn't play, and it's only twenty dollars. It's cool. And GTA Universe still works. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, as a PS2 game right now, not only I mean, is it you know the only really good thing that's out right yeah. now? It's it's well, really good value. You see, Fries, Fries is like a, a California and like Southwest chain headed for like twelve ninety nine. Right, you can it's like God. at that point, it's like an impulse buy. Dollars or a Circuit City were doing it for fourteen ninety nine. Like, I can go, have, I can go have a steak, or I can buy and it's the a new full GTA. On, it's a full on GTA. They didn't really. I mean, it's you know Vice City quality visuals. It's got all the radio stuff, and just because it doesn't have the multiplayer stuff in it, it's not that big of a deal because it's only twenty dollars. So if I play GTA one, uh-huh. how much difference is there between Liberty City Stories and GTA one? GTA one, GTA one. He means, so, I mean, GTA 3, the first you one. You trolling asshats. He means the GTA. <laughs> God, even I knew what he was talking about. If I played Grand Theft Auto 3, the yeah. original Don't Grand encourage Theft Auto his idiocy. <laughs> What's the difference? That's how, yeah, how much, how much difference is there? Isn't the Liberty City basically a retelling of the same stuff? No. Oh, okay, I thought it was. I thought was, I thought Liberty City stories. It's, a, it's was a completely new you're story that character. acknowledges the timeline. You're a different character. Yeah. It's got 34, 33 mini games on it. There's a main quest line that's forty hours at least. I, I mean, oh, it man. took me took me forty five hours to beat the PSP one, and Jesus. I got like, yeah. I mean, it's a you big, played that more big than Oblivion. Game. Yeah, 
It's a big, big game. And it, what they've done is it's a lot of people play GTA and they they start the cutscenes and they skip them. And I think for this, because it was originally on the PSP, they just didn't do long cutscenes. So you get these a little bit of flavor of the interaction between two people, then it goes straight in. It tells you what you need to do, and the objectives aren't convoluted like they were in San oh, Andreas. Nice. So it, instead of in, in San Andreas, you'd have these these sort of branching quests where an individual quest maybe had three or four. It'd be like, go here, do this, find this, get in this plane, parachute on here, then storm the building, kill this guy, grab this thing, and get out. And it'd take you two hours. Whereas in Liberty City, it would, that was awesome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but in Liberty City, it's literally go here, steal, steal a car, take the car to here, and kill this guy, and you're done. And all the missions are like that. So it's also it you you can dip into it really nicely. So the synergy is like contagious. I actually almost like want to go which, buy the thing. I know people gave me some shit for giving it a nine, but for twenty dollars on on the PS2 right now, I don't think there's a better new game on PS2 right now that you could go and just yeah. It's, it's kind of exactly what PS2 needs. Yeah. Actually, it wow. should be yeah. celebrated, not just trolled, which Newsflash. is what seems to be happening on all the boards GTA right now. GTA is still relevant. Who knew? So other <laughs> stuff, other stuff I've been not playing. Me. I played something that got ignored. That um, I was just interested in because um, I'm English and I remember <laughs> the comic book um, is Rogue Trooper through IDOS, which I think everyone in the US wrote off because it was an IDOS repedal of an SCI game. You talked about this on the EGM. Did you podcast. see the, the EGM? We gave it like eights and sevens. We're all like, what? It's the very fuck? very good. <laughs> um, a Rogue Troopers part, um, uh, Rebellion, who were the, actually the developer that did the original Alien vs Predator on the Jaguar, um, have Whoa. been have been. Um, continuing to develop and 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 remained independent and in the uk one of the ways they remained independent was they acquired uh the publisher of 2000 ad which is the comic book that that does judge dread most famously and rogue trooper is this alien futuristic um soldier and he had there's like a he has a sentient hat or something I his, can't his, his yeah. fallen comrades were turned into his backpack his hat and his gun and, and, his gun. and they're like wise so, packing right yeah so he has an, he, into, he <laughs> like, what, what? like a double take yeah. Yeah, that's like that's like that Jack Black show that didn't get made right <laughs> <laughs> so so there's this sort of like you know relationship with um with with your weapons and everything and it's it plays a bit like a sort of dumb slightly dumbed down grow um, wow but it's really well done, and it's on the X. It's a new Xbox game. I played the Xbox version. It's on PS2 as well. The Xbox version looks really nice. Did you happen to drop it in your uh, 360? Um, I've not tried, but I wonder I, if it I was will. BC. I, I would imagine it will, because I think I'll, I think that's a requirement now, right? It was, we I'm thought it was. I'm consumers just are no longer interested in backwards compatibility. Apparently, oh right, that's right. It doesn't matter. Hold and on, then, uh, uh, just to, just to hog the mic for a little bit longer. <laughs> the other thing that I I. Uh, I started playing Oblivion again. Oh, you said you were <laughs> done. <laughs> you hear that? You hear that? That's the sound of applause from everyone who reads the message boards. They're like, he's back. Yes, Horror oh, Stories. Yeah. Oh, God, yes, we've been waiting for it. You know what it was? It was a fucking patch. <laughs> oh, oh, it was the patch. Every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. You want to buy that dagger? You know, I thought it was going to be like some girl that told you she forgot to put on a patch. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like over her eye? <laughs> Dar har. Yar. No, like the other kind of patch. Oh. So I uh oh. I downloaded the I downloaded the live update and, and, and downloaded the patch for Oblivion just to see what it did and it kinda sucked me back in again. It didn't bork your game. We'll talk about it that did, later. It did. All right, so are you playing it? Any, are you we'll playing it, it any differently this time? Sorry? Are you playing it any differently this time? I did spend an hour um because I I'd completely got out of the rhythm of it. So you go into this world, and my, my sort of um, my quest list, unfinished quest list, is huge. And if you've not played for a while and you're not, and you're not in that sort of vibe, you do wander around just going, what the hell am I going to do? Because nothing seems interesting enough, or you're, or you're in the middle of some quests, and you kind of lost the, the, just the energy to do it. And you, right. and you sort of see, oh, I'm halfway through this one. I'm like, I can't really be bothered. I don't really remember. <laughs> And I feel so, like that a lot, just in life. Just in life. <laughs> so yeah, in that way, Oblivion does reflect life. But we'll we we'll get to the balking of Oblivion um, later on. But there you go. I've, I've, considering that I've been not had much time to game, I've actually played a lot of games this week. That was the longest what you've been playing I segment know. ever. I know, and I haven't even hit mine. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut mine down to one game because the one game that I played that that's relevant to your twenty dollars is my twenty dollars was a date with Alex on the episode uh, one Half Life Two expansion. Cool. And it, you know what? Here's the thing. And then so the review's up, and I gave it an eight, which which a couple of people around the office have been giving me massive hell for not giving Hi, it. Hi, Ryan O'Donnell. Yeah. Hey, hey, what's up, Ryan? It's too low. An eight is too yeah, low. Yeah, an eight is too low. First of all, an eight's a great score. Second of all, it, it's a fun expansion, but there's something we talked about 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 uh, episodic gaming is it, how much 
are we going to leeway are we going to give? You know, this is like the beginning of episodic gaming. We have to determine what's, you know, what, what we expect from episodic gaming. This is like three and a half hours at most. $20. For 20 bucks. It's three and a half hours? I have heard it was five or six. It's definitely longer than that because Skip's saying five or six. Hey, Skip's been hey. playing it all week at his desk. But it is recy- <laughs> it's recycled environments. Okay, and that, that, was, that was the second part of my real complaint with this. Is you come into this thing expecting to do something new, and, and they immediately don't even, they don't even hesitate to shove you right back into what you were doing at the end of Half-Life 2. So within you know, no time at all, you feel like you're just playing part of Half-Life 2. And, and there's no multiplayer to it. There's no new enemies to it. So, it, hey, Half-Life 2 was really great, but I expect a little bit more I mean, for it, my 20 bucks, especially if I'm waiting six months. I mean, it's going to be another six months till I have anything else. Does it feel like the bare minimum they could have done? Is that kind of what it... It's difficult uh, to say bare minimum because the upside of this well, thing you is... just flame bite you, aren't you? <laughs> oh my God. I wouldn't say bare minimum because what they did put all their attention to is what makes it really awesome and the reason I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to somebody, which is Alex. And Alex is so... The best digital character I've ever played with in a game, period. She has she has a real personality that comes through in the game and actually comes through so strong that Valve has some real questions to answer about how they're going to handle Gordon not having a personality because she's so real and so cool now that Gordon being this... See, mu- this Gordon mu- isn't supposed to have a personality. I know. He's, huge. He's supposed I to be know. That's every what I'm nerd's saying. dream. And they're going to have a real problem with that because Alex is so real now that her not interacting with you makes you just feel like you're just like this wooden, you're the wooden guy in Tekken 3. You're so C3 it isn't PL. really an expansion, though, is it? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a separate it's a thing. This isn't, like, this isn't like Luke last week saying that, you know, if you bought everything for Oblivion, you've spent 80 something dollars and 64 yep. cents. I mean, you cannot play Half-Life and just jump into this $20 five-hour thing. You, yeah? you you could because the beginning does the little, you know, like beginning of 24 thing. Or is it, sort of, or is it so fan-serving that, that it's you, very fan-serving. you need to have played all you the way through the first it. game? You need to have played it game? because particularly the first section of what you do, without, without spoiling anything, the first part of what you're doing would be completely unintelligible if you hadn't played through Half-Life 2. It wouldn't make any sense. So I should play you, Half-Life 2 first. Yeah, you should really play Half-Life 2. And, and really, if you haven't finished it... <laughs> Luke's turning his like, He's going, oh, fuck? God, I don't know. Man, man, man. So, how, dude, how, you how, should totally play Half-Life 2. Half-Life I know, 2 actually, is, I really is want to, freaking awesome. As soon as I get the new gaming PC at my desk, I'm going to... Yeah, Half-Life how long, 2 is... How long is Half-Life 2? I don't know. 20? 20 or so, yeah. yeah. It took, right. me a, it took me a long while to get through half of it. That's two. a good first and person shooter it. to you oh. as opposed to Halo, right? Oh, don't. Yeah. Nah. Oh, troll. But we have to go to the. Yeah, question it, ha- it has more environments than concrete halls. What about. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Skip's moving this on. All right, Skip's all right. more audible than ever this week. <laughs> all right, we, we got to get you that mic, man. This one right here. All right, got to get you mic. All right, so uh, contest winners. All right, so we got the contest winners right here. Right there, right there, folks. And uh, let's go through real quick. Here's the here's the winner. All right, we don't need to talk about that one. And uh, we're gonna give special mention to Beige. Beige did an awesome last week. Awesome. There was actually a request on on this particular thread, uh, Beige, to stop being so good because you're making <laughs> everybody else look bad. Yeah, I actually want. I want. I'm gonna send that dude a message today. I want to talk to that guy. He's, he's got Luke wants a, a special help. He did call yeah, us. The, I need a. I, I I'm gonna talk to you, Beige. I'll send you a message. Well, Beige did refer to us as the guitar hero of right of radio, which shows. on its own, I think, if he hadn't won last week, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. like, we I mean, we don't, we haven't posted any real rules for this, but I think we probably can say that if you win one, that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't we, wait. Plus, we try to spread the, the love. The dude's Canadian, and we like still can't figure out a way to give him his hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw this part. What's We're up, Frenchy on, lady? Want to come back to my room? Well, I got broadband. The thing that I wanted to just from <laughs> I think from, that might be a, a pretend Lukeism. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was a pretend Lukeism. From Beige's thing, I, the thing I just wanted to mention was something that like I went and read to Garnett too because it was actually really it was really cool to read, and it wasn't the you guitar hero thing. Wait, yeah, it's kind of like a bedtime story. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. It said, one of yours is a special edition director's cut of nostalgia, wit, and abrasive humor, obviously put out by people with something to say. As a gamer, you recognize it instantly, whatever your age or console of choice. It's the voice of the people, plain and simple. It's as real as it gets. And, like, 
for someone who does like care a shitload about video games to have that be like something that people are getting and picking up from it actually means a lot to me and i'm, yeah. I'm i mean th- that's a tremendous compliment I was thank you very flattered by all of it <laughs> yeah all right, so even me, the insulting me, one <laughs> <laughs> why don't i throw a couple of quick quotes then from, from some of the other ones out here we've got we've got ar black uh, 37 who says there you have it a fucked up group of individuals who come together each week to give us an entertaining hour out of our sadly game driven pathetic lives i'd love to offer up a perfect score but i was sadly distraught to see in the video version that there was no lingerie model sitting amongst the group hey you know what dude absolutely right send us the uh, lingerie models i'll see what i can do yeah, next we, week we need to definitely get <laughs> on nice. that definitely need to get on that um alex alex anand when a podcast makes other gaming podcasts feel like they're being kicked in the nuts only for your ears you know i would like to point something and out. this part's even i'm better. thinking you know as you know as the editorial director. As editorial director. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone that spells voice. my fucking name wrong <laughs> gets disqualified. So that's everybody. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, it is Davis Sun. Hey, my, na- my name is butchered worse than yours. No uh, that mine, yeah. That mine, Luke Smith, easy mode. <laughs> also, by the way, you've got a you've got an offer here. I saw that. Luke makes people bleed. Luke rocks, and Luke can date my sister. Nice. nice. So that's Lukeums. Onup.com. Send pics. There you go. Um, uh, I'll we, get you later. Yeah, you're getting all, all the. I'll tang. get you later, Sony. Don, Don Brown. What you're gonna? Do? I don't want to know. Anyway, <laughs> Don Brown uh, offered up a little poem for us. There once was a podcast from One Up. Could listen from sundown till sunup. Ooh. <laughs> Until editor Luke Smith stormed out like a huge bitch. Then I could do nothing but throw up. Was, it, was that Dan Brown, the author of Da Vinci Code? <laughs> <laughs> Just the insulting. I think it the been. most insulting one is fantastic. The one, the, that was actually. Can I read this one? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but you have to make sure. Yeah, there's there's, there's a plenty, lot. There's plenty. There's a lot. There's a lot. This is from. And then we'll get to Neo the Job, who's uh a regular contributor. Yeah. yeah, he posts on my blog. Why not you, yours? Too. Are you fucking serious? No. <laughs> not really. Not really. <laughs> Who got paid to come up with that witty name? That witty, silly name? Man, hang on to the talent you guys got there. Coming up with names like One Up Yours. You know what you guys should do with that name? Get a giant marketing firm, hire the world's greatest pop artist, do some commercials, and then get a giant hammer and hammer that name directly up yours. Excellent. And there's probably more. He later goes uh, on to refer to me as the P. Diddy yeah. of the podcast. Which Maybe kind of, I'll get kind of the, offensive. Yeah, here we go. Maybe I'll get the British guy giggling and the gay guy wheezing. Is that you, Luke? I'm sorry. That's Gary with a silent R. <laughs> God. Quit that wheezing. Is, that's a riot to listen to, by the way. You have no idea how much I enjoy my ears bleeding, and I have the Luke wine to thank for that. Fuck and what you, the buddy. F- you ought to try living with it, dude. You ought to try living and with it. And what the fuck is the deal with Shane? Do you fancy yourself as some kind of media mogul? Yes. Are, you, are you the Ziff Davis P. Diddy? Why are you infecting every single piece of audio and video escaping the offices out there Over in California? Over fucking exposed. Thank <laughs> and by the way, where the hell's your Pepsi, man? You can't be rocking the Diet Coke. Because of P. Diddy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Next week. Then he says, I just hope Ziff doesn't produce any video game-inspired pornography. I couldn't handle Shane's immense paleness. <laughs> <laughs> but at he's, least he, he's uh, right about immense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oh, boy. Oh. End the show. <laughs> all right. So wow. there was a winner to all this? Yeah, there that, was that guy does not win. But we, to be fair, right. we did ask to be insulted. He's, oh, yeah. He's right about it, man. Can we get that sound bite? Neo Job nailed that one. So the winner is Tafizer. Tafizer did an awesome job. This was excellent. This was excellent. He did, he did like a takeoff, even with a byline, of the uh, Washington Post out, online. Um, is this the one that killed us in the beginning? Like, there was one that was like, it was... Uh, like no, 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 no. Okay. He gave us a four out of four. He starts off, you know, take one mundane looking room for eccentric game journalist, fast, sharp flying projectiles, and you have yourself the one up yours podcast. In the post Y2K period where the ever perennial internet has taken hold of our everyday lives, the game industry seems to be progressing right on the same tune. So it's cool. He does it, he does it very much in the style of like a news report. I mean, and, and that came across really well. We liked that. And we also liked that in his wrap up, he says, uh, Overall, I would say that One Up Yours is a well-balanced mix of news, opinion, and insight with a strong connection to the OneUp.com user base. And yeah, you know what? That's what we try to do. So it's cool that he's catching that. It's good that we're we're making that vibe. What does he win? He wins a one hundred dollars iTunes gift card. Sweet. So we're all like, you know, feeling thoroughly stroked and yeah. uh, pompous and I need, arrogant to, I need and, a Kleenex. You know, we can all I be. Still, I still really like. You Neo got Jobs. stroked a little too much. I guess that's why I like yeah. Neo Jobs. <laughs> So we're right. going to be dicks now because... 
So, yeah. uh, I, Skip's even. You know what? We, we've done this segment so long. Skip stopped going like that. He like he like gave up on that. Are I we think supposed to have a break? Yeah, we're supposed no, to have a break. No, not so, yet. So we'll come back in a minute, and we'll hit the uh, roundtable on open-ended versus scripted play, and we'll be back in five. You're listening to One Up Yours, part of the One Up Radio Network. One Up Network Radio is being brought to you by And One Street Ball, the only authentic street ball game featuring the full roster of And One mixtape tour players. That's guys like Hot Sauce, Helicopter, and The Professor. It's available for PlayStation 2 and Xbox for $39.99 on Tuesday, June 6th at your favorite online and real-world stores. And One Street Ball is rated E10 for everyone 10 and up. Hello, and welcome to the 1UP Radio Network. If you know the name of the podcast you'd like to hear, press 1 now. You have selected Radio PM, starring the editors of the official U.S. PlayStation magazine. To download an episode at radiopm.1up.com, press 1 now. To listen to a promo, press 2 now. In a world ripped apart by war, only one magazine... All right, so we got to open up the floodgates here on this uh, whole talk about open-ended games versus scripted. And it's kind of building off of, first of all, we were talking about two things we talked about a lot, actually, are Grand Theft Auto and massively multiplayer games. And this is like a big shift that's been going on over the past few years towards these sandbox games or, you know, a wide-open emergent gameplay and all that kind of BS the PR people give us. But the bottom line is, what do you want to play? What do you want to play, John or Shane or Luke? Do you want to play games that have stories to them or do you want to play big, wide-open worlds? I like them both. Yeah, I'm going to say I, I like big, wide open with with a reason to do it. There's nothing worse than being thrown into an urban environment and just being, you need some guidance. Well, they said go is, and make your own fun. Yeah, no, it's like, I mean, I like the opportunity to sort of get distracted, but I still want, there still needs to be a point. And a lot of the biggest games now, though, like the mass market games are those incredibly open-ended games like The Sims or Animal Crossing, where it is just like you make your own fun. Mm-hmm. You know, some it, oblivion, oblivion, <laughs> but oblivion there's there's there. Are, it holds your hand. It holds your hand. There's a main quest and then there's the, the four or five major side. Quest. I mean, like you've always got something that you're working towards, even if it's just being the Mac daddy of whatever guild it is that you, you're in. But if you're the fan of oblivion around the table, uh-huh. even you ran out of steam before you got very far through it. As far as technically through the story part. Right. I mean, I nearly finished it. I mean, it's one of those things with a game that's like that kind of a time commitment. If you stop, it just it kind of lets go of you. But I mean, a lot, there were a lot of guys that that have played it just from the feedback that I've got from saying that I stopped playing. A lot of people are like, yeah, I stopped, but I stopped at about 70. If I had, if I had more time away from work, <laughs> I would probably have played a lot more. But I still I think I still would have stopped. But I think those open ended games are like, you know, an evolution and it's something that's new. Because if you look at gaming twenty years ago, there was nothing like that. And like, you know, early on games like SimCity and stuff say, like Sim that. City. But you know, back in the day you go to arcade, you knew that every game you played you were going to die. Like the end of the game is when you die. And like now these new games aren't about that. Like Animal Crossing, you never die. It's you know, it's about just like the experience and like communication and having these weird these weird ideas and yeah i think it's it is like the future of gaming but you know, old old-fashioned games aren't going anywhere people still want those experiences too so what's going to happen are you going to have both i mean it, i don't think you can bring both together especially well i think when you try to blend both together it becomes kind of a mess well, like, well no just what gta is gta is yeah and G- most- gta is a hand-holding sandbox the way that oblivion is and i think we're gonna i think fable 2 is going to be more like that i mean it was pretty in that direction anyway but i think there's going to be more freedom in in fable 2 I think. I mean, that's. I think that won't be hard. But I think there's going to the key, the key is going to be that you know we want you to go from here to here, and when you get here, it's over, but the game isn't over. It's just the narrative is because in Oblivion, if you beat everything, if you're like the top dog in every guild and you've beaten the quest, you can still play. I mean, the way the characters interact with you changes. But the game still exists, and you can still live in the world and do things in the world. It's just a, it just becomes directionless. That's the point where I'll be nauseous. Well, right, but well, at that point, you've dropped a hundred hours into it. You'll and, be nauseous. You know, probably a hundred bucks. If you're Bethesda, how would you be nauseous? Troll. Because Luke, Luke is the group out of this. <laughs> Luke is the one out of this group who's the hardcore MMO player who does 
end level stuff at MMOs, right? Right. So how does that keep you attracted? Well, the thing like of late, how does I that keep him attracted. <laughs> how does it keep him attracted? Uh, attracted. <laughs> well, how does that keep that spell working? One thing that I want to see out of MMOs more and more and more, and we're starting to. I mean, the old EQ used to do it, but like player driven events need to happen more, and we're starting to see it emerge in games like Eve Online, which is a great game to talk about. But as far as actually playing it, it's not a whole lot of fun. It's a lot of like, oh, God, I'm traveling again. I have 47 jumps to go pick up this car going, 47 jumps to go back. And it's like you just – Sounds like a job. It is. It is a lot like a job. But the thing that World of Warcraft has done was – like we talked about it before, like the big gate opening event, which was a player-driven event ultimately. That would have happened regardless. But it still happens within the confines of an, an, a, an a story for a server. And World of Warcraft, you're going to see that again sort of with this new 1.11 patch. But as far as, like, the scripting and open-ended gameplay, like, what keeps you going back? We said it, I've said it before. It's the people. And, like, that's why I try, when I tried to play Oblivion, I think Oblivion was really frustrating because it was, like, my first RPG that in a while that didn't have the MMO part. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't terribly, you know, I, was, I wasn't terribly into Oblivion, and I was kind of bored. And it was like people were like you were bored. You just, there's so much to do, and like it didn't really like it didn't really push me out of the door. Like it did. Like I did the the part where you get out into the world, and I started like walking across the world, and I was like, oh, it's a dog. I'll kill it. See, I agree. I think Oblivion is so open ended. It kind of loses me. There's like so much to do, but I don't feel like I have to go do any of it. And it's like there was it's nothing- not balanced. Like there there isn't like a tight good experience you can have where it's all fun all the time and what open-ended game hasn't done that to well you? but I, th- I think games can be more open-ended like resident evil 4 for example has the semblance of a little bit of open-endedness like you're in like a physical place and you can Whoa. and you can go back you, you can travel you can travel where you want to an extent in resident evil 4 more so than previous resident evils but yet it is still very scripted as i say it's very linear it's very scripted it That's, is but not an there, example there, on there the is open more side. there's more freedom there's elements of more freedom in i think game. a lot of games do that though as far as giving you the illusion of freedom like it's I mean, not levels there's no levels in resident evil 4 but now we're but, but what we're talking about is more level design or map design than it is than it is game philosophy so right. there's like two sides of the coin then right but there are different ways to go there are different paths you can take in, in that game and i'm just saying like for me I, I like the fusion of these things where like traditional script experiences become a little more open-ended like but without opening up so wide that it loses me because that's what happens to me and i mean i'll say another example the need for speed recently the series has been like that it's been wide open where you know you're out on the street screwing around and that's cool except the problem is is that before i reach the end of the storyline production i've gotten bored with it and i'm like driving around okay you know what i've done this game i'm tired of it i'm bored with it i never make it through to the end that's of it that's exactly how i feel about grand theft auto and i am probably the minority well, but what's here what's but... interesting is like no i'm i'm in the same boat yeah, everyone, like, everyone just... kind of acts like grand theft auto 3 invented the sandbox gameplay but if you look at it things like super mario 64 or the legend of zelda for nes are similarly sandboxy and it isn't a new thing absolutely so great point the people forget about that do we have some well, yeah, so this is interesting because I, one of the reasons that brought me to this was because the, there's this report on Business Week Online that this group called the DFC Intelligence is claiming that they're predicting worldwide online gaming market to grow from $3.4 billion right now to $13 billion in the next six years. I mean, that's a huge amount of money, so there's going to be tons of people playing online. And Is that based on some assumptions that all successful MMOs will be like Worldcraft? Because that's not going to happen. No, actually, part of what their assumption is is that the next generation of consoles are more connected to the Internet, and by virtue of being more connected to the Internet, that will spurn developers to start thinking about developing for console-centric MMO play, which, which is an uh, error right now. Oh, God, no. But I, also, but I also think that, if, I mean, as, as consoles go online, the online experiences are going to replace the offline experiences. I don't think it's just pure, like, you've got what you've got now, and then we've got all this online stuff, and that's just more. I think there's just going to be less, I think... You know, everything is going to be passively online anyway. But I, th- I think as MMOs expand to other genres beyond RPG, like Halo 4 Runners or Burnout MMO, which we're hearing about now, like things like that will bring people into MMOs who yeah, haven't talked about it. Uh, it's rumored. Mm. I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> heard about it. Yeah, I, like I, I haven't, I haven't seen it's it. It's listed on EB. You can pre-order it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, see? There you go. As an MMO? Uh... <laughs> the other side of the, the other side. So of will the, that be EA and Bungie calling this week? It'd be good if they would call. I would like that. <laughs> so the other part about gaming in wide open spaces, if if it's going to be MMO driven and it's going to be online, that means we're going to have all the retards. And I know that's one of your favorite. You subjects. love you love those retards. Yeah. 
You know, like killer, in line are dicks. <laughs> killer ducky on our message board was like, why don't you talk about some of the best worst people experiences you've encountered while gaming online? Well, I'll tell you why we don't talk about them because they fucking suck and we really don't want to remember They're, ass it, hat it, yeah, number seven. Interchangeable 13 year olds yelling racist comments. <laughs> it's like, but you know what? A lot of them are even older. There's yeah. like, it's like people get on there and they act like because you can't see their faces. Suddenly they're this, you know, this unknown personality so they can just act like whatever idiot they want to. I wish we had a direct line to Microsoft where we could be like, yeah, I was playing Halo 2 last night, and I played with, you know, this dude, Alpha 27, he's a dick. And then, like, they're like, oh, great, banned. And then I would just <laughs> never have to worry about him again. <laughs> and, like, I will single-handedly volunteer to go out and clean up Xbox Live. Just, I'll go play. And you, you just there you are give me the power. Pro- policies. You can give negative feedback. It, they do try. Right, but that shit ain't working, yeah. is it? I mean, there's... I think, it, does I anyone think here think I don't, that... I don't play with strangers. No, my I don't mom, either. My mom told me not to. I just think that the douchebag, like, the douchebag denominator is so great that you're never going to run out of them. <laughs> right, so if you don't play with strangers, then the community's not working. I have enough friends. That I, can I know you're... Friends. I'm, I'm saying... <laughs> <laughs> right, we have enough friends, and we can all get together and play and all right. that, but I'm saying in the broader sense of bringing... Well, if, I, if I wanted to explore that community, it does work. I mean, I'm sure there are good people out there, and I could meet new gaming And we were able to... You're able to easily find people that you do want to hang out with, you know? I mean, like... You're saying that community doesn't work because people that you don't know in real, you, you're not hooking up with people that you don't know in real life. But there is people, there are people that we know that we're not necessarily friends with, just acquaintances that you can track down and, and hook up with. And that's, that's the key. Yeah. You, want, you want, I mean, I'm kind of like, you know, I want something at least a little bit familiar. So I'm not just, I hate it. Like sometimes I play with my brother-in-law and lives in Chicago and we'll, we'll go and play Halo or Perfect Dark or something. And there's nothing worse than me and him like you know we're drinking beer and chatting and playing a game and then on, in halo there's two little fuckheads doing a split screen link into it and they're just like no oh, he didn't know what he was doing oh did you see what he did did you see what he did oh i totally got it and it's like just relentless and you're just like you know what i'm just that's the reason why kids get beat up by the parents <laughs> because did this happen them, to you when you were a child some of them just fucking need an ass whooping and when i hear that it's like can I, you get your could you get your dad from me on the, on the <laughs> real quick yeah mr alpha 27's dad beat the boy hard <laughs> that's not what microsoft tries to sell us with on live i mean they talk about about this great experience where you're going to be out there. They show all these pictures of people from all over the place, and you're getting together, and you're hanging out, and it's all cool. Oh, and we're painting skateboards together. Huh? Right. Whatever. And it's oh. bullshit. <laughs> I, you know, I, ha- I have played an online game where it works. I remember, like, Fantasy Star Online. I was playing it on Dreamcast, you know, a, de- a decade ago, and I did, like, random play with random people and find cool people, and we had a good, good time, and it was like... Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why did it work? Because they were all really into the game. and you, it was, I remember I was playing once with a guy from like England, a guy from Japan, and my friend, and we all like teamed up together and beat this boss, and it the, was like... So, the, I mean, that, there's the assumption is that if you, that everyone has a mature attitude towards <laughs> it, and if by chance you stumble into something where everyone's <laughs> a grown-up, it's great, but more often than not, you don't. And it, I think it's time-sensitive as well. I used to play... I mean, I used to play Rainbow Six 3 when that came out. That was the first game that I really got into on live, and I played this every night with like the same 15 guys. And, like, the, the 16 of us would just play, go through maps, and, like, and it was awesome. It was great, and it was, like, a great introduction to live. And then it's sort of, since then, it, the, the overall quality of the experience is If totally they could age-gate out. the community so that you, could, you would only play with, you know, over 21 or something, would you take advantage of that? Yeah, absolutely. Abs- yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a See, good that's kind of what I was trying to head idea. towards. Would you do something like that? Because oh, right yeah. now, live's, live's feedback system is fine, but it's not doing enough to get us out there and create the kind of community they want, which is, they inv- like, Microsoft sells this whole idea of, if you want to go play Forza or whatever, there'd be all these cool racing fans, and you'd all hang out, and you'd just go play some racing Forza or whatever. And it doesn't work like that at all. Well, do you think that they're trying to sort of, that they're trying to offer an indication of what people are going after by, like, the, the thing that you can choose in your gamer score? Like, are you a professional? Yes. Or, and it, is that That's, working? Well, the problem is most, you, ex, most, you, Xbox, fa- most Xbox fans the, are into the same kind of Whatever the casual games. one is. The recreational? Yeah, that's recreational. What put, that's yeah. what I put, too. But, like, you know, it's not a lot. It's, everybody who has Xbox 360 wants to play shooters mainly. It's not like there are, like, these hardcore, like, people who are into just, you know, Viva Pinata or something. It's not, there's not a lot of variety. Like, the, your average Xbox Live user is pretty similar, I find. So uh, maybe on this whole question of, like, open-ended versus scripted, We'll have a chance to talk about it over the next couple of weeks as we work through our game off our pile of shame. Which is what? Are we doing that next? <laughs> I didn't see that. I, I don't know what it is yet. I'm scared. I don't know what I'm it is scared. Yet. I have a feeling I know what it might be. 
Well, so Skip and I have been talking about this, and we went through all the selections. And so since everyone hasn't played it, believe it or not, and it really fits the, it fits the mold of what we're doing right, we're going to go with Psychonauts. Cool. I played the first level. <laughs> well, so you have a leg up. Yeah, I booted it up, but I never already. So some, so they need to send Luke Smith a copy. Yeah, I need to get a copy too. I yeah. do have to go ahead and say in advance that my name is in the credits of that game. Really? Yeah. Score how did you? How now. did your name wind up in the credits of that game? I ended up a friend of mine is the, one of the programmers, and I helped her get her job. But it, I'm not biased or anything. So to biased. I'm not the biased. He loves it already. Wow. So yeah, I'm you know, you know, to it doesn't that. come on the PlayStation. It does actually come on the PlayStation. Oh God! Garnet Blu-ray. Are you Garnet? Are you ever right? <laughs> just, just a question. He's just impulsive sometimes. Just impulsive. <laughs> yeah. I think you need some Centrum Silver. Which just some helps. <laughs> yeah. To help you out. Oh, shit. Should I have to replace my Geritol? You're sounding more and more like Matchman Man Randy Savage as the show goes on. I think he's doing it. Because I'm running, because I'm running out of the tea here. All right. So that's what we're going to be playing. If you guys want to play along with us, go out and grab a copy of Psychonauts. So how are we going to do this? We're going to play. Are we doing? It's cheap. Are we just going to talk about it next week? We're going to play. We're going to talk about it over the next couple of three weeks. How long it takes us to get through it? And right. We'll just kind of share, like at the at the end of the show or the beginning of the show. We'll does do anyone like, know if it runs on the 360? I think it does. Okay. Oh, that would be golden. Yeah, if it doesn't, I'm going to complain. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> if you can imagine. <laughs> you? No. It, never. I can't It'd imagine. It would be awesome that. if we come to talk about it, we could get Tim Schaefer to come in and talk about it with us. Let's try and do that. Oh, that, would, that would be sweet. He's just down the street. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, he's a good guy. All right. There's something to look forward to, and uh, something else to look forward to is news. We'll be back in a couple of breaks with uh, a couple of seconds, whatever, after this break. With news and Luke. Listen to EGM Live to hear Electronic Gaming Monthly editors take you beyond the pages of the magazine. Extended impressions of the hottest games. Shocking celebrity guest stars. Exterminate all man animals at will. And the newest video game soundtracks. That's EGM Live, available at egmlive.oneup.com or the iTunes Music Store. Want to know what's new now? Then join Jim Lauterbach and Patrick Norton as they tackle the latest technology news. They'll keep you informed with their weekly What's New Now podcast. Just go to whatsnewnow.com and subscribe or subscribe through iTunes. You're listening to the One Up Yours podcast on the One Up Radio Network. And we're back, and from the four corners of the world, it's Luke Smith with One Up News. <laughs> the four, four corners, corners of the world? We let him out of the building? <laughs> I would, he can do whatever the hell he wants. He's not an employee anymore. <laughs> oh, that's, that's true. true. Yeah, that's After you true. fired him? Yeah. So the first thing I want to talk about this week is they patched Oblivion, uh, which we wrote about a couple weeks ago, and that like it would be nice if they would patch Oblivion, and they patched it to improve the frame rate and sort of borked it. And you were saying earlier in the show that it was borked. Different. Different people are reporting different things. What I found happened was because I downloaded the new the new live update and the patch in the same night, and for me, the frame rate was better, but there was some because everyone's talking about these graphical changes, but there's no I've not seen the official list. Like some people are saying, oh, the textures are better, and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm buying that. But what I did notice is that some of the lighting seemed different. Like they maybe changed the levels because like my guy has one of the big green glass swords. And it used to sort of glint and like look very transparent, and now it looks kind of flat and dull. And I'm not really sure if that's just a problem that the patch started, or. But then the other problem I had is that um, as soon as I put the patch in, the loads just got terrible. Like it was like, in fact, it would choke on loads frequently. In fact, I mean, the whole thing just like ground to a halt several times wow. post patch. Um, Game-breaking freezes. I've been to- yeah, I mean, like, it would it would nearly nearly fill up the load bar and then just, like, keep chugging. Wow. I wonder how that game's going to turn out when they finish it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I've, heard that, PS3. I've heard that might be... I don't think you'll to... ever know. They never do finish it. <laughs> There's, like, a, you can clear the, you know... The cache. Clear the cache. I've heard that might fix that problem. Well, that's the thing. Like, I read on NeoGAF that there's a way to... F- that people were saying, like, you enter, like, a button combination and it'll clear the cache. Well, and you I... just turn it on hold down A, right? Well, this this is a new, like, elaborate Contra Code-esque clearing of the cache. It's just like a... Yeah, and I sent I sent the thing... Even to... more clear? I, yeah, I... <laughs> even clearer. A clearer cache? The Ajax way. I sent it to, Mi- I sent it to Microsoft yesterday and i was like engineering what's up what's this do and they haven't got back to me yet because i want to write about it but i don't want to like kids don't do this because it gives the f- you a message the like, frame rate 
um, is uh, oh sorry I mean on Oblivion the, the one thing that they did fix though is that the frame rate is much better it's kind of a mess though for one of the best selling games on a console to be like janky and you're putting in codes and downloading patches to fix it and I don't know about that I had a problem um, in one of the towns in Anvil and like different people had different problems with Oblivion and no one could work out why there wasn't consistency to it but if you went to Anvil previously when I went there um, the entire town looked like it was 10 feet off the ground <laughs> Which it's meant, levitation homes. So yeah, the whole thing, and there was no, none of the buildings had any ground in them when you were walking around. So, and it was the town that was surrounded by water. So um, all of the NPCs would fall into the water as they were wandering around, and so would you, and you couldn't get back out. And but you could still interact with them like they were walking around. So you could, so, so like these guys would swim up to you and go, "Good day to you, sir," and uh, it was just really fucking bizarre. But um, it did fix that. So is this acceptable to you as like a, a fun aside? Well, like, I had, <laughs> <laughs> this is quirky. I love it. No, this is not acceptable. No, but I mean, I didn't even I didn't even find it until uh, and there and was. And problem. you went back to playing Oblivion because of this. You're like, oh, well, this no, is, one, this of is the, one of the things that I was curious about was if one of the major mighty curious. This is weird. fun. <laughs> it, no, it, it did fix that problem for me. That, <laughs> created, created more. that right there is why guys like Party Boy on our message boards are asking if next gen is just a bad joke. Well, you know, I mean, he even goes through like all his stuff, and even oh, he... come on, that's like saying he's PC gaming a bad joke. Hey, I'm just saying there, it, are, there are some kicks to be ironed next, out. It's not next gen. It's like these games are so fucking big now when they develop them that, and it's it's purely business practices oh. that forces these things. Oh. It's not that they, you know, they were just like, oh fuck it. I mean, the developers like just like tear themselves up about being forced to release stuff. That they know is good. You'd think that developers don't know there's you're, a problem with a game. Defending, but Bethesda does not have a good track record of shipping like complete functional. But no, you're talking about a good you're, track record. They don't even have about, a bad track record. You're talking record. about the business requirements. I'm talking about the talent, the guys that sit there and spent four years on this thing, and it got to a point where 2K or whoever it was says, "We've got to put this thing out now." And these guys would go, "No, we haven't finished it yet. We know what it's like. We develop products. What up? Game videos. Gazerk. Gazerk's not finished. Game videos. It's still in beta." We do it, and it pains me to put these things out when they're not finished. But there comes a point where the business requirement outweighs the art, because at some point you've got to make some money, and the people that get abused by people like us are the producers and the artists and the programmers, because we say, oh, next gen's fucked because the games aren't finished. And, like, it's not their fault. So you heard it here. One up, the oblivion of video games. <laughs> <laughs> patch, patch coming next no week. Web, Sometimes no, I, I wish. no website is finished. GameSpot's not finished. IGN isn't finished. We're, they're all constantly but, in yeah, development. But when we do get AAA games that have no problems whatsoever, is that like a magic anomaly? And we're like, we should expect games to be broken because they have to be out by the end of the fiscal year? No, we no. shouldn't expect I it. I do not. I, I will, I will, like, what's up, not, Sin? Not apolog- like, I don't accept these apologies. Nope. Not acceptable. Don't accept it. But right now, the business requirements of the games industry and the requirements of putting a game together are out of sync because Oblivion was unusual that it took four years to get it there and it's still not done. And Halo 3 has been in development for, what, two years already? And some developers have the luxury, like, like id and the guys at Epic, they can say it's not going out until it's done. But not many developers have that luxury. They have they have other things hanging over them. And at the end of the day, the games industry is a business. And at some point, whoever's providing the money is saying, we can't afford to cancel it. You've got to get it into a state where we can release it. Seeing- you know what you're doing? You're making Gabe Newell's argument for episodic gaming because that's exactly his argument. His argument goes that it took them five years to put together Half-Life 2 and at the rate they were expanding you know like it took them X number of years to put together Half-Life and then the expansions then Half-Life 2 took this much longer he's like at this rate we'll be retired before we put out Half-Life 3 Mm -hmm. so we'll just go to episodic and give you guys a chunk every so often if that's if that's if that gets Shane what he was just talking about is probably the best thing let me give you another example like EA is main encouraging move when they lost Billions of dollars probably by pushing Superman back. Mm-hmm. It's missing the, the movie window. It's coming out with a DVD now. That's that's huge because the game wasn't ready. It wasn't good. And instead of shipping like a crappy broken game to cash in, and they decided, hey, let's actually make that's this. That's EA. They have billion dollar quarters. Wait a minute. I thought EA held features out for year after year. They do. Oh, okay. So sometimes, but, but EA, sometimes EA they can don't. afford to do that, and and the Quake guys can afford to do that. But there's a lot of publishers and a lot of developers, like a lot of people. I mean, like. Tim Schafer. I mean, if we get him in here, let's get him to talk about it. You think he didn't get shit? I mean, he ended up publishing through Majesco. Who? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
Oh, Jesus, I didn't expect this to talk. Friggin', that was a lot. Of, <laughs> that was a lot of information coupled with news. The next thing I want to talk about is Ken Kutaragi, who I love. Oh, God, oh. we have to. My Lord and Savior. He, he is a, he's a weekly so supply of what the fuck. He's lost it. And this week's is uh, the PlayStation 3 is, is more than a game console. Oh, it is. It is a PC. He never said it was going to be a game console. Speaking about the PS3. <laughs> and it's not going to. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, that, that's You need games to achieve that. Speaking about the PS3, we never said we will release a game console, he said. It is, <laughs> it is radically different from PlayStation it is clearly a computer. <laughs> With a game console, you need to take out any unnecessary elements inside the console in order to decrease its cost. This will, of course, apply to the PS3 as well. He's nuts. He goes on to talk about how he envisions it being built to order with, like, a million different pieces and everybody can build their like own. A, like a sandwich like, from shut, McDonald's. Like, shut up, Ken. This is not what you need to be doing. <laughs> I mean, you jumped on Sony this week on your yeah, blog at I mean, egmshane.oneup.com. I do. I talk about how they're destined to lose market share, and, like, this isn't helping. Like, they, no matter what, they're going to lose market share just because 360 and we are, like, strong competitors. And unlike last generation, you know, they actually have some strong competition this time. But when talking about how PS3 is a computer and how it doesn't need games... Well, they've been and, banging that drum since day one, haven't uh, they? It's like it's not the PlayStation or the PlayStation game card. It's the PlayStation 2 computer entertainment system. And they say... Not only do they put it in their press releases and their website, they say it out loud. It's like there's a rule at Sony where they have to say computer entertainment system for everything. What was the stink, you might remember, in the UK about taxation on the PlayStation 2 as to whether it was... Oh, there was something to do with what it was capable of processing right, or something, so it, was, it had to be declared a computer, not an <laughs> entertainment device or something. Launches missiles. So, yeah. Not available in Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand it has all this functionality, and it's cool that they're, like, pimping that functionality, but they, you don't want to lose focus, and this is still a game system, and it's supposed to be fun. <laughs> what do you mean you don't want to lose focus? They already lost focus. They lost focus a while ago, man. Well, they're shifting, they they're shifting focus. Wasn't there a lot of back and forth, shifting. like, recently as well on the controller? Didn't they respond to... The immersion, the immersion stuff. thing. Yeah, no, no. The, just the, because, like, Microsoft last week was like throwing some pot shots. At oh, Sony yeah. Well, Microsoft was talking about how, like, they did the whole motion thing with their sidewinder. giant sidewinder. I have one of those in a in a cupboard back home. Whoa! When I worked on PC, and how it didn't yeah. work with most games. Yeah, or... we just didn't find it to be particularly functional. It was horrible. Like... They had all kinds of crap back then. I have I have a joypad that they created where, um, it's. It's kind of like the Negcon. I had one of these things. And it, and it, so it's a joypad that just feels like it's collapsing when it you're was playing the, with it. They called it the first-person shooter controller. You remember That's that? right, because it, it has like a handle. Sort of like, yeah. Ooh. And you, like, moved it to, like, point around, like, almost like the Wii they, thing. They actually, the, back then, they had some great sticks for the PC. They had a, they had a flight stick, yeah. uh, like a flight stick that you could twist as well oh, that worked really well. Yeah. Stuff, yeah, they did have good sticks. Good stuff. But so I mean, yes, Microsoft have done, but, they, but Sony, I think, were being sort of very polite about the whole sort of, uh, you know, bitch slapping they were getting. Well, Although they, they kind of, at this point, just have to bend over and take it for a little while because everything they say, every time they open their mouths, every time it's like Phil Harrison. They need to tell Ken, Phil to like, put a sock in it. They just, like he sock, stand, they he stands up gag. and bends over and grabs his ankles and is like, do your worst. <laughs> and that's what, I mean, that's what's happening. Like, I don't know how, like, I don't know how Sony can get away with some of this stuff. Like, are you kidding? Like, I just heard that come out of your mouth. Really? <laughs> yeah. God, I'm a little confused by the PR strategy. Like, I went back. I went back. I was going through <laughs> Skip's Flickr this week, and I went back and found my favorite picture in life. It's of me after the Sony conference on the back of the bus, smiling. It's the sweet grin of victory. I, I, I was there. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you were. <laughs> but it's like, and I keep reading this stuff, and I'm like, I can't believe this. Like, I just. Yeah, they need, to, they need to fix their spin. They need to write the P, they need to like write that PR ship because well, I think the problem is they don't really have any spin. They're just they letting they're, <laughs> they're letting the executives sort of just run their mouths off on whatever the internal not, thing not is. The best, and not the best way. They're swimming in it the same way they were swimming in it developing the console. They're on the last minute just trying to rush through everything. That's the same reason a freaking Sony console has an Nvidia PC graphics chip in it and not a custom they're, design they're, graphics they're processor. They're consistent with their lunacy though. I mean, like this, it's a computer thing. I mean, Phil Harrison has said that before. That's true. I mean, they've been saying crazy 
like 4D time plus space bullshit for like 10 years. I mean, like, yeah. remember PS2 was like supposed to be the Matrix or something, you know, like, this it's isn't new. Then, remember, they, had those yeah, PS9 then, they were telling yeah. us, you know, I mean, there was all the stuff about, you know, the Iraqis buying lots of them or yeah, whatever, yeah. but there was a, it's a computer, it does, you know, let's let's well, not forget that all of these things at their heart they also, are they have, the, they have the patent on living in the internet, too. But, okay, so, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so it, it was a computer then, but they still, they weren't charging you like it was a computer. And it they're was, not marketing it like it's a computer. Yeah, but it's a single, it should be like the, it's the well, problem with the we PSP. We haven't seen how they're marketing the PS3. No, but, well, we've already seen some intent that they want it to be. It's like with the PSP. It's like, make your mind up, what is, what is it? Is it a movie player? Is it a is it a music it's player? Everything. Is it a games machine? <laughs> it's and everything done, man. You can't convince anyone that something is good at something if you're telling them it does everything. Absolutely. So that's Sony. We hit Microsoft <laughs> a minute ago. Let's be fair and talk about Nintendo. It wanted talked in Japan this week about the virtual console pricing. He sort of mentioned... A price range that stuff would cost for the VC in nice yen, and, and it converts to like in between five and ten bucks essentially for games. It's like four fifty and four fifty to eight ninety nine. Good That's okay. I pay I I pay I pay four fifty for buying a Each? commando. Yeah, per game. It, I think it's reasonable when like most of Xbox Live Arcade games are terrible and four dollars, and the the good ones like Lumines are fifteen dollars. Yeah. You know, like rumored. That's that's real. That's a real. I think that's yeah. a real slide. I think that's pretty <laughs> real. Yeah, but yeah I, I think Nintendo, I think that, that press conference was interesting because he, he also said that they don't expect to lose any money on Wii, whereas Sony has gone on the record of saying they intend to lose $885 million launching the PS3. That's what that extra 50 bucks that you're going to pay yeah. for it to be two forty nine ninety nine is going to be. That's the profit margin. We've loved about it, and I don't want to... I don't wanna, um GT go in to think we're not going to come back to this. We're not going to catch it today, but at some point we need to, we ought to get into that because this is obviously an interesting topic. What do we want to see on Xbox Live Arcade? What would be good games to be Ooh, out there? Yeah, I, I, I kind of got into that thread because yeah. I, I want I I, I, well, I was me and Luke have had had this theory for a while that all the Dreamcast games will eventually work right. their way under Live Arcade. So so next week we'll come <laughs> back. We we're running out of time. We don't right. want to go too long today, so we will definitely come back to that next week because it's interesting stuff. For, the other thing about Nintendo is they landed this messaging patent, which is essentially like it it mirrors the patent that Microsoft has on Xbox Live in a lot of ways, where the ability to message in games and sort of like a messaging client. And they the thing to keep in mind is they filed for this before the GameCube came out. So they've been like waiting to get their patent approved for a long ass time. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that's something that we're going to see in the Wii. We might. We should see, we should see some sort of inter user con- communication, hopefully, their online service. Hopefully. But. We don't know anything. Maybe they'll unify things with DS and stuff as well. So you well, have they, an ID they, they for talk, the machine. They talked about yep, that. I want to talk also, about that too. Like, um, they talked about the Opera Browser on Wii and how that'll work. And Yeah. Cool. The, the, one of the last things to talk about today is sort of the slap to the wrist that Rockstar got over hot coffee. The FTC was talking about this for like months and months and months and months. And uh, future infractions will result in like an $11,000 violation. I guess my question is like, really? Who still cares? $11,000? Yeah. The, wow, huh? <laughs> On a game that made what billions? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah, see, so like exactly, like so no it's one a cares. token gesture, basically. Yeah. So we went through all that, and this is the Jack Thompson got lots of free PR. The last thing, Yay. yeah, oh, the last thing is the thing that I walked over to skip in. Garnet's offices this this week and like st- was stamping around like Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> I was so pissed and. I guess my opinion on it shifted from the initial reaction, but like EA announced that Battle uh, Battle for Middle Earth Two has like this weird marketplace clause where they're releasing three maps that you get for free for Battlefield this Lord of the Rings game, right? Yeah, you get them for free if you pre-order at like EB Games, Gamespot, or Game Crazy, GameStop, or EA dot com. You get them for free. If you don't pre-order, you have to pay like the equivalent of eight fifty in marketplace points. And Yikes. I was like, "What? The, are you kidding? Why? Why do kids have to pay nine bucks for three maps?" Like, I was really upset about it. But then, like, you're getting it free if you pre-order. So that that led to Garnet and I talking about the validity of pre-ordering because I hate pre-ordering. I hate game stores. I hate a lot of the people who work there. I hate <laughs> hearing about how the Wii works Feel when the I've played it. Like and you have it, and you're like, yeah, you just do this. Like, no, that's what that's what the EGM image said. That's over on your magazine rack. That's not how you play it. And that was just for show. Oh, how do you know that? They, they did talk about that on their podcast, actually, with that photo. Yeah, I listen. I was there <laughs> in spirit. So I stamped around a lot, and you sort of t- we talk- Garnet showed the light of how pre oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to say that. Don't don't paint me into that corner because I'm definitely not a big fan of the way game retail works. Right, but all. you're not a fan Especially of Especially not having been in it. As a matter of fact, I pretty much abhor it. But 
but pre-ordering it has, does it has a value. It, it, it does pub- serve a purpose for publishers. Yeah. That's the point of it. Yeah. But I don't like them selling like crippled games. Like like I don't mind a free T-shirt, but like if I don't buy it from that retailer, I get a version that doesn't have as much content. No, so you, you Luke, get it. You just have to pay eight fifty for it. Wrap up the rest of the thought. What's what's the benefit for publishers? The benefit for publishers is that when you pre-order, you're sort of giving uh you're you're participating in essentially a survey of how many copies of the game to make. To extend this in all kinds of directions, when you're at a when you're at a game store and you see a bin of the same game being sold, that's overstock and that's stuff that they overordered and they're the publishers losing money on. When publishers lose money, it rate it leads to increased prices for the consumer. So in this weird roundabout way you can rationalize pre ordering, like pre ordering titles that you care about, at least as a way to inform publishers to ship appropriate amounts of the game, which will cut their overhead and ultimately someday in a fictional universe the savings may be passed on to you. So like, nine dollars apparently. Yeah, not, yep. that part I wouldn't hold my breath about. But which, but the, but the part that really does pay off is when you go into the store and say you wanted um, some Capcom title because Capcom titles are notorious for being like in this niche. It's like they're very popular with hardcore well, uh, gamers. I think a good example would be like Guitar Hero Last Fall. Holy no, crap! Nobody knew what it was. And it's an expensive high ticket item that stores right. don't want to invest in because it's like sixty, seventy dollars. They might only get four copies because it's a risk. Whereas if ten Halo, people pre-order it, they might get a like Halo Two when that came out. It was if you hadn't pre-ordered it, it was difficult to get. If you wanted it, the day pre- it came no, out. I, I, I pre-ordered it and I got the ten it and, and canceled well, it. That recently happened. Mario, Mario, like new, new Super Mario, was very difficult to get the first day. Yeah, I so couldn't get the, it for the first week. The, I mean, they're, they're, it's positioned as providing a service, but I don't like this idea, this sort of implied discount thing, where it's like if you pre-order it. You're getting money off the overall experience or something. I mean, but it, the communication of it is a bit sort of gimmicky. I don't know. I think the maps are a hell of a lot better than the T-shirts. Screw the T-shirt thing. I mean, I, I like right, this. You pre-order it would give you more of the game. <laughs> but you could still go buy this part. The part is they're in, what they're doing is they're incentivizing me to go participate in their survey because you're right. You know, that's a good way to put it. It's, it's basically a survey for them to figure out how much to make of the game. It's like bundling the game with an expansion pack if you pre-order. Really? Yeah. Sort of. It is you still have to down, they're not yes. giving you the content on the disc. You get, you just get credit, presumably. Does it say? I would guess they have some kind like of code system worked out. I would bet. Right. So you punch in the code. You, you, they give you like a redemption thing that yeah, you can punch with into a live. You will receive a promotional coupon that makes it a free download. So you'll still be sort of accessing. And I've never seen them tie marketplace stuff to specific downloads. Or wonder if they just. Well, that's give something you a, that they're doing. Um, with, that's this will tie in nicely. That's something that they're doing with EA, and it may be. If Microsoft is smart, that little Xbox Live update that they released, maybe they'll tie that in on disc because they're going to release it in new games to maybe the NCAA football game that's going to come out and sell mm-hmm. a little bit. Like Just, That would be a good way to get it to users during the summer instead of the s- users who don't have high-speed internet getting their Xbox Live updated, which has a lot of functionality offline, getting that updated in the fall when the disc is, is likely, when like there's the Zerg of Microsoft Game Studios titles, and by then there'll be a new update, and it's like, oh, great, months behind. If there was a new Capcom game, a new fighting game coming, would you be more interested in pre-ordering if they offered you Street Fighter 2 on live arcade? Oh, of course. So, I mean, would you have a complaint with that? No, I think I think a lot of it is going to come out of the way they position it and communicate it. Because it, the, it, the way it came, when the news came out, it sounded like, you know, the game, it's been basically saying... I had a hissy pre- fit. Pre-order it, and the game's 10 bucks off. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Which is and bullshit. And it's a $60 game, which we're saying is a $70 yeah. game. But really? I, th- I think you would disagree if, say, there was a game that came out and, like, the version at EB had extra content and that version, or that content was not available anywhere else. I think they do that, that would make a huge difference. But they do that, too. I've seen that. Like, there's yeah. different... There's Are different the maps going to be available day one? Because that's another annoying thing, is that why release a game and release add-ons for it at the same time? Shouldn't they just be on the disc? I mean, this is kind <laughs> of what we got think. to with Oblivion. Yeah. It's like, you know, well, it's I, I'm, I'm fine with giving people an experience, letting them play it for a few months, and when a bunch of people have kind of exhausted it, a possibility saying, hey, look, we did some more stuff. But, it, like, the day it comes they're out... They're basically raising the price of the game $8, because yeah. this content that could have been in the game, and then it said, like, oh, hold that back, and let's charge them extra. Or give it to people who pre-order. Or give it to people who pre-order. So if you wanted the game... It's, they're trying basically to force your hand. If you want yeah. the game, go pre-order it. So that seems to transition well into like a potential idea for question of the week, which would be asking you guys, do you pre-order? And if you don't, is there a way to incentivize you pre-ordering? Can we limit this just to games? Yeah, two games. Right. Yeah, Not to hardware, because we oh, know, yeah, we yeah, know yeah, you're yeah. going to have to yeah, pre-order hardware, hardware if you want to no, buy some hardware. Only games. <laughs> So do you pre-order, and if you don't, like I don't, because I hate the whole experience of it, is there a way to incentivize getting you to pre-order? Is that fair? Perfect. All right. Nailed it. 
And the other thing you'll be doing for us this week is contest item number three, which Skip came up for us, is the opportunity to draw. I'm really <laughs> nervous about that. Or even worse, Photoshop. Photoshop. <laughs> Lord, oh, oh, you right. really invited this one. <laughs> That's cool. Thank but God we do we know that any pictures of Shane, in, he's going to be immense. Immense, <laughs> yes. His immense whiteness. Paleness. 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 Pale I'm not that pale. I'm not white. I'm, we don't really want to know. <laughs> All right. So anyway, there you go. That's your contest item. Details are at boards.oneup.com. And we do appreciate all the review submissions. And if you are listening, we'd love to have you go by iTunes or wherever and give us a good review. The uh, listener numbers we've been getting are fantastic. We really appreciate you guys listening. The more listeners we get, the easier it'll be to get guys in here uh, from developers and publishers to talk to us about games. So tell a friend, have them come listen to us, get on the boards, and we'll talk to you next week. This has been One Up Yours, a production of the Ziff Davis Game Group and part of the One Up Radio Network. One Up Yours is hosted by Garnet Lee and John Davison, produced by Andrew Fister and Mike King, and is published every Friday afternoon at podcast.oneup.com and at the iTunes Music Store. What's up? I'm not in the fucking credits.